Hand. Thank you, David and Peter. Um, yes, um, so uh, to start off, uh, let's shift gears a little bit and move further east in to Eastern Kenya. David and Peter work in Northern Kenya, and I work in further east in areas along the Kenyan Somali border. And in this presentation, I will discuss how we're using similar strategies to save two other globally endangered species, the Hirola antelope and the reticulated giraffe. This is not a goat garden giraffe. They just share space with humans. This is the Hirola antelope. It's, the world, it's considered as the world's most endangered antelope. And we are working toward protecting the last 500 individuals. They declined from about 16,000 in the 1960s to less than 500 today. And, but before we go into that, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about northeastern Kenya. This is a vast region, 121,000 square kilometers, s stretching from the southern tip of Kenya to Ethiopian border on the north. And there are three counties in there, Garissa, Ujia, and Mandera. The communities that are living in these areas are primarily Somalis, and they are nomadic. This area has the highest concentration of livestock anywhere in Kenya. And the communities historically kept cows, camels, and goats. And you can see this is a typical village in northeastern Kenya. How many people can see giraffe in there, in that photo? Yeah. Uh, so wildlife is also thriving here. I grew up, I was born and raised here. Uh, both of my parents were nomadic pastoralists. Uh, they still had their cows and goats, and they still um, out out there, and they, they refused to move to town. Uh, so I'm the only one who has moved from the family into urban areas. And within these landscapes, wildlife is part of us. As you can see, even the, the kids playing, the giraffe is the referee uh, <laughs> for this match, as you can see. And as Peter talked about mobility, uh, communities here move from one point to another. And camels are the primary means of movement here. They're very resilient, and people love them for their milk and meat. And even myself, when I was very young, uh, you know, I really liked enjoy, uh, enjoying the camel rides. Uh, being on top there, on the camel hump, is really comfy and, and is the primary means of transport that we use uh, in this area. So people uh, in this area face very extreme um, climate scenarios. Rainfall is very variable. Drought is a common factor. And there is also flooding that happen often when it rains. But amid this chaos, uh, this region has the largest concentration of reticulated giraffe. About 11,000 of them call this area home. And it's the most important part of their range. Yet, it is the most vulnerable part of the range as well. Given that this area lacks formal government protected areas and is also close to the Somali border. So there are constant threats facing these giraffes. In this picture alone, uh, probably over 30 individuals are here. So they are thriving and they are also breeding with uh, and flourishing uh, in this area. Thanks to 
the protection that we're providing uh, to these uh, giraffes. In, with these giraffes, also coca with the world's most endangered antelope called the Hirola. The Hirola is also known as the four-eyed antelope. It's an endemic species just restricted to southern Garissa, one particular county, and historically occurred on portions of Somalia, but now they're extinct in Somalia. There are only 500 of them left, and the Hirola is the only representative of the entire genus in which they are. So they are really important, even evolutionarily, and the information that they carry. It's a really important species f globally. Uh, because we are close to where the areas where Peter is working, uh, also the graves extend to our area, uh, and we have an isolated population that co-occur with the giraffes uh, and the herola. And the herola and the giraffes also uh, share range. Uh, as you can see, they co-occur together and, uh, and, and flourish together. In this region, these animals compete with livestock. Historically, communities in this area uh, were livestock keepers. But because of climate change and rainfall variability, uh, people have stopped now livestock keeping. And they have turned into more browsing species. Cattle require grass. If there's drought and lack of rain, it's very hard to have grass throughout. So people are now have shifted to adopt to that situation, to camel keeping. And, 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 and uh, water is a big issue here, very big issue. One of the biggest problems to deal with is water. And also, there are a lot of goods in this area. People, uh, because of the trees and the grass and the lack of grass, people have also uh, kept the grass, uh, keep the, the goods. This water is also a, a big problem here for the goods as well. So Hassan, I want to introduce one farmer who we work with. Uh, he was one of those pastoralists who was keeping cows in that region, in this region. Uh, but over time, Hassan lost all his cows because of the drought. All the water pans have become dry. The giraffes have also paid a price uh, because of lack of uh, browse. As you can see, the trees behind them, is, there's no foliage. Uh, if they don't have anything to eat, you see even they have skin problem. Uh, so they end up in homesteads, trying to feed on uh, one of the last standing trees uh, with foliage. Hirolas are also equally affected. Uh, as you can see, they really get emaciated when they don't have sufficient food. Uh, warthogs, uh, we were driving, and uh, this is one individual we found alive, uh, but it was too late to save. Uh, as you can see, uh, all this is impact of drought. Uh, in addition, we have invasive species that have affected the habitats of giraffes. This is mesquite uh, colonizing part of the range of the giraffe, and it forms thick, impenetrable, uh, th thick thickets that are hard to traverse through. Luckily, we have the Tana River, Kenya's longest river that cuts through uh, the part of this land. So Hassan, the farmer that I, the, the pastoralists I introduced, moved from 400 miles from where he used to keep cows and moved to sections of the Tana River to set up a farm, a uh, change of livelihoods, uh, from pastoralism uh, to farming. And one of the key crops that he planted was mangoes. Mangoes takes about four years to mature. Because mangoes 
are preferred by giraffes who have been affected by climate, like Hassan, they, the, the giraffes sneak into his farm and they eat the flowers. So they strip off the flowers. So after waiting for four years, he ended up losing the mangoes to the giraffes. And then floods hit and sweep the riverbank, taking part of his mangoes, and even accessing the farmlands becomes the farm becomes an issue as well. So we are working with Hassan and other farmers to come up with coexistence uh, a program where we are, we have talked to these farmers and come up with a strategy to help them tolerate giraffes. And one way we have done this is by introducing a lime project. Giraffes love mangoes, but they don't like lime. <laughs> so we, we linked Hassan, we advised Hassan to plant lime instead of mangoes. So he, and then we linked him to companies in Nairobi to buy directly the line. We have also helped in riverbank restoration where we help to protect his farm from flooding. In that way, Hassan now loves conservation and loves giraffes. And he's collaborating with us. In addition, we are also helping restore habitat for Hirola. Now that we don't have the elephants, we are working with communities to thin down invasive trees and introduce grass or recede those landscapes. landscapes. In addition, we also have anti-poaching teams that are protecting that are protecting the giraffes and helping with the coexistence uh, program. We have also talked and have a farmers network that we are working with in the entire area where we are collaboratively working towards solutions of uh, coexistence between the farmers and the giraffe. Recently, we set up a uh, educational center where we're educating young school-going children about the plights of these giraffes and also the local livelihood. We talk to them about local wildlife species uh, and other educational programs such as restoration efforts. Uh, and we have almost 180 students visit this facility every month. So the future of Hirola, this little calf is Shirohiloa, and this is giraffe, as you can see, this little cute giraffe. And the future of Hassan and his family are all intertwined. So together, and with the support provided by you all, is helping us to integrate the needs of all and to secure future for everyone. Thank you. <laughs>